What's cracking, everybody? What's cracking? Today we got a good show for y'all today. We're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about defining what sets you apart from your competition. Now, normally we save these courses for the inside, for the Flash Film Academy member side, but today we're gonna go a little public with it. We're gonna kind of we're gonna, we're gonna just whiff on one live so you can see some of the things we talk about on the inside when it comes to growing your business. Um, let me, let me say this. Let me say this. Cause I want to touch on here. We, you know what you want to watch this video. If you struggle to stand out in a crowded market today, we're going to, we're going to dive into how to define what sets you apart from your competition and why it's crucial for the success of your business. That's what we're going to dive into today. So let's roll this intro and let's get right into it. Listening to Content and Cash, a Flash Film Academy podcast. If you want to learn how to take pretty pictures, this is not the place. But if you're ready to make a living by learning the business behind the camera, buckle up because it's time to turn passion into profit with your host, Ty Turner. What's good if this is your first time on this channel right here, you gotta understand that this channel ain't about taking better pictures. This channel is about understanding the business side of content creation. So all my photographers, videographers, food photographers, whatever you, the product photographers, this channel is simply about understanding the business side of content creation. It's real important that you understand how to get the bag. 25% of it is taking a picture. 75% of it is business. And we like to make sure that we uh we talk about it here. We like to make sure that we are we keep you guys on top of the business side of things because what good is all the gear if you can't make any money with it? Well, you can't afford the latest gear if you can't make money with it. And to start things off, this episode is brought to you by our Capture and Convert Kit, which is five courses and two ebooks that's free over at flashfilmacademy.com. So go check that out for this loud noise. Uh, there you go. I, tried to, I told you. I told you it was going to be loud. I tried to tell you it was going to be loud. So let me get my mic together and let's get right into it. Because there's some things I want to talk about today that are very important. Make sure you guys post where you're from. Always post where you're from. We like to see people from around the globe. All my all my international players. Um, And what I'm going to talk about is unique to everywhere. It's unique to business in general. And if you are trying to do this as a side hustle or as a full-time job, you got to really think about these things, right? These things are extremely important to your success. And I think that when people go into business and they're not business-minded, they don't think about these things. And these are things that you will learn in page two of a business book, right? So let's start with number one, understanding the importance of a unique value proposition, a UVP, right? And I got notes because I'm gonna go off my notes and we gonna kinda, I wanna talk a little bit about them as we go through each one. A unique value proposition is what sets you apart from your competitors. It's the reason clients should choose you over others. Without a UVP, you're just another option among many options. Your UVP needs to clearly articulate the specific benefits you offer and why those benefits are valuable and how you're different from your competitor. Everybody's a photographer. Everybody's passionate about it. Everybody love it. Everybody been doing this since they was two. Everybody got the latest and greatest camera. Everybody got an eye for this. Everybody know the angles. Everybody is artistic. Everybody just loves photography. What sets you apart? I hope it's not price because that's the worst thing to set you apart. Being cheaper than somebody does not make you better than somebody. In fact, it may make you look like you're worse than somebody. People will pay for good. They'll pay for great. They won't pay for mediocrity. So when you start lowering your price, you don't look better. You just look cheaper. And as I stated in many other videos, 
especially something big, I talk about in module one, is you cannot recover from being the cheap guy. So once you become the cheap guy, you can't recover from being the cheap guy. And that's the problem a lot of content creators make. They figure I'm a lower prices so I can get my foot in the door and they can never recover from it because they build a client base that's used to them being cheap. All right. They're used to, they, they build a client base that's used to them being cheap. And if y'all got questions, make sure you post them. I'll jump into them. So let's get to the number two thing is identifying your strengths and your differentiators. Like what, what makes you different now? The Flash Film Academy side of things, we, and I'm going to punch you in the throat with this again because it's important because I think I need you to, when people ask me like, where can you go to get more information on this? I don't want you to think I'm just teasing you and I'm dipping, right? We preach a different approach, right? We believe in the niche approach. We believe in being the best at a specific niche, right? And the reason I tell you that because is because it becomes one of your layers of differentiators. It is a layer of things that set you apart from your competitor. And by specializing in something, people would rather you specialize. I would rather you specialize in being a veterinarian than being the best surgeon I've ever worked with or ever heard of. Yeah, that don't mean you're used to saving dogs' lives. I need somebody that know a dog liver from a, a person or human liver. Like, I want a specialist to do this. I'm, I'm okay with a decent specialist to do this. So identifying your, your, your strengths and, and your differentiators is huge. And one of those things are niche. You got to have a niche. The Flash Film Academy method, our system, is the first layer is your niche. The second layer is being good at that niche or offering unique things that's unique to that niche, right? Offering things that is unique to that niche. Because look, when you walk in somebody's business, they know when you know their industry. You know when you're talking to another photographer because they're talking about, you know, I shot this at F5.6 and, you know, we backlit it and added a little hair light to make the hair, like, you know when you're talking to a photographer. And I'm gonna tell you this straight up. As, as a professionally trained photographer, I know when I'm talking to somebody who went to school for it compared to somebody who just picked up a camera. I know the difference immediately when I have these conversations. I know the, the difference between the two. I can, have, I can have a quick conversation and I, can, I know the difference between somebody who has been professionally trained and somebody who picked it up and said, I want to be a photographer and learn how to do this. I know the difference. I, I, I can sniff it out in five or six sentences. I can look at how you hold your camera and determine if you were professionally trained or not. Believe it or not. I can determine how you hold your camera. So these are things that w when you're working with somebody who have a specialty, people in that industry know. They've been doing it for years. So we want to we wanna identify what sets us up. We want to identify our strengths. And one of them should be niche. That's why I tell you guys to go in things, not what you love to shoot, but what do you know? Find out, find a way to shoot what you love to shoot in an area you know. Because shooting it is the easy part. Talking about it is the hard part. Being intelligent and understanding the needs of that client based off their perspective is where a lot of people fail. That's the hard part. So having a niche helps you walk in the door to have a mutual understanding with that client that you know what you're talking about. You Have you ever went to a car dealership and it was a car you researched and knew about and the person you working with didn't know the difference? They didn't know what it was. They don't know the difference between the V8 and the V6. Oh, it's just like the V8. The V6, you'll be good with the V6. It's just like the V8. Bro, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Give me somebody else. You don't know what you're talking about, bro. Get me somebody else. Get out of here. So once we have niche is important, I'm going I'm to triple down on it because you need to know it. Once we have determined that niche and we offer unique things within that niche, that is going to set you apart from your competitor. Now you're not competing with every John Smith, Bob photography in the world. You're not competing with them guys. 
and you are in your own lane where there's very little competition that lives in the world that you live in. And let's talk about section three, which is next. The next thing you would do is if there is competition, let's research that competition. What are they offering? How, how do they present their services? Let's understand their strengths, their weaknesses, because it'll help us position ourselves more effectively. Let's identify the gaps in their offering that we can fill and we can, we can communicate these gaps to our clients. Hey, yeah, that's great. That's a great direction to go in, but they don't offer blank, blank, and blank. We fill those gaps because we specialize in working with your industry. We have experience working with your industry. I think that's very important. There was a question that came up, uh, I want to say, on the TikTok side of things by Crystal Spotlight Productions. What are some ways you stay? Wait, let me go back. She said, what are some ways you stay disciplined when you get depressed, depressing thoughts, or when you feel unmotivated? I Check my bank account. Check my bank account for sure. Shout out to Tony, Scoop alumni gang. Facts. Scoop, definitely facts. Much love. What's up, Rock? Okay, yeah. What's up? My boy Rock. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Scoop alumni all day. We still doing it. We still rocking with it. Hit me up. Hit me up when you get some time. Hit me up. We definitely rocking with it on the scoop side. Long story. We'll talk about it one day. My, my members know what that is. We'll talk about it, though. Um, so how do I stay motivated? Honestly, I'm just a self-motivator. I'm going to be honest with you. Go ride down a nice neighborhood. I, I, think, I think if most people realize how much money is in content and, and how much they're missing, like, like if you're hungry, if you're not able to buy the stuff you want, if you go ride down a nice neighborhood, and you realize how much money is in is in content creation, um, it'll motivate you. I, I think a lot of people are unaware of, they're just unaware of the amount of money that's in that's in content creation. Let's just be real; they just they're just not aware of it. Um, and because of that, they don't, they're not as motivated as they should be. They don't feel like them as a person, like they can, they, they can make the money that's in content creation. And it's, a, it's just a boatload of money that's available. And, and, you know, if you're not, if you're not okay, it's because you're missing the business side, especially in this economy. Um, so that motivates me, right? That motivates me a lot. All right. So let's get to number four. Let's think about crafting our unique value proposition statement, Right. Because every, my, my value statement, if you're looking at Instagram, it just came off the screen. Be inspired, be creative, be profitable. Like every, every company need to have a value statement. If you have a company and you currently have a value statement, I'm going to ask that you post it in the comments right now before I even move forward. If you have a value statement, I'm going to ask that you post your value statement in the comments. I want to read a few, if that's okay. And I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you with your value statement if you post one, because I'm getting ready to go into section four that talks about crafting a unique value proposition statement. I'm going to give people um, just a little bit of a little bit of two seconds to, to, to uh, post. it. In fact, I'm going to go to I'm going to read forward, but I still want you all to post it. All right. I still want you all to post your value proposition, your value statements. So crafting your unique value statement right now, it's time to craft your UVP statement. It should be a clear, concise, and compelling. It should be clear, concise, and compelling. Think about your clients. Think about what they care about most. Think about how to deliver those needs. Your UVP should reflect the care of what makes your business special and how it benefits your client. Right? Um, it should make, it should be, you know, it should, it should, you, it should identify what they like. So let me give you an example of what mine is. For my company, right? It's increased engagement with content designed to get results. That is my value statement. That punches my clients in the throat. Don't go steal my stuff. It's not going to work for you. You, you ain't us. That, that is intriguing to my client because my client want to do just that. They want to increase engagement with content that's designed to get results. That is, my, that is what 
We, that is my value statement compared to my competitors. My competitor is saying, you know, hire some guys that's passionate about what we do. Hire guys that love filming. Hire guys that really, really want to make a, they want to help you make money doing this. That is what my, my, my competitor's value statement is. Hire some guys that, that really want to shoot your content. My value statement punch you in the throat from the first two words to the last two words. Let me say it again. Increase engagement with content designed to get results. That's a, that's a lot. That's a two piece with a biscuit to the client. That if I'm choosing between somebody who really like what they do in this company that creates content designed to get results and I am a business owner who live in a world full of results, who am I going to go with? Passion man who been passionate forever? Passionate picture man? Who just love taking pictures? They got pictures of them as a kid holding a Polaroid? Or am I going to go with the company that, that increases engagement first with content that's designed to get results? Who do I choose to spend my $20,000 budget with, $40,000 budget with? We got a few of them good ones coming in. Sam T, we will empower your cause by shining a spotlight on impactful stories for awareness, engagement, and change. All right, I like that. True24 says, I run a content creation business for the hospitality industry. My value statement is turning followers into guests. How do you find this? Um, I think it can always be more. So let's so let's get into like okay, let me let's talk about I want to go to the next step because now that we got a few, I think the next steps. And let me mind you, normally I would give you the first four on why it's important and the second four I would only give to Flash Film Academy students. But today to give you a a, a glimpse to show you what it's like being a Flash Film Academy student, I'm going to give you all of it. I'm going to give you all of it today. I'm going to do that. Um, let me say this. Let me say this uh, real quick before we move forward. Don't forget we have our, let me see if I got it right here. We got our contract pack. All right. So a contract pack. It's the ultimate contract pack for photography, videography. It's real. Let me tell you what's, what's dope about our contract pack. Unlike something that you can write with AI or something that you would get as a template that only covers, you know, payment terms. Ours are based off people in the industry. We poll people in the industry to learn about the issues that they come across. And we create contracts like making sure wedding photographers eat, making sure there's power whenever you're doing um, real estate photography and new buildings. Um, a lot of real world clauses we've included in our contract pack. So check it out over at Flash Film Academy. All right. So let's get into number four. Let me go back. Because I want to get into, I want to, I want to start to, I want to start to help you guys tailor your message. And number four is tailoring your message, right? First, we need to understand who your ideal client is. That's something we talk about heavy in the inside. Because none of this matters if you don't know who you're serving. None of this matters if you don't know who you're serving. And if you have not figured that out, we may be, we may be moving too fast. A lot of people just want to work with anybody that's, made, that's giving money. And, and life and business don't work that way. If you work with anybody, you're only going to get the cheap people. Because only people who, only cheap people don't, don't want the best. Either you want it done right or you want it done cheap. And people who want it done cheap don't care where it's coming from. People who want it done right want a specialist to do it. So when you service everybody, you got to be cheap. That's why when, I, when people go to your website and they don't know who you service, you service everybody, that's why you're cheap. That's why you don't attract big clients. That's why you're not attracting the big boys because you look like you service everybody. You look like the cheap guy. So you can't, you can't craft a statement for people who want it done cheap and people who want it done right. It don't work like that. Because you're going to turn one off. Either one going to think you're too expensive or the other going to think you're not capable of providing it at a level they want. So pick a side. Do you want to work a lot for a little or do you want to have two, three jobs and be done for the month? The choice is yours. 
the amount of pressure it's going to be on you is going to be the same for both. In fact, it's probably less for people who pay more because they're like, here, you're a specialist. Let me get out your way. Here you go. Hey, let me get out your way. The guy who $100 means a lot to him, he's looking over your shoulder to make sure everything's right. He's going to bug the hell out of you. So the first thing we got to do, and we talk about this heavy here, and we talk about this in the membership. I'm going to keep punching you in the throat. We talk about it heavy is we need to understand who our target audience is, even though we have a niche. Your niche does not dictate who your target audience is. Your niche and your target audience are two different things. They're two different things. They need to align, but they're two different things. So once we understand who our target audience is, then we need to tailor our message for them. We need to speak their language. We need to address their pain points. We need to show how our services provide them with a solution. Now let's go back to mine because mine talk to my target audience. My target audience is business owners who have events. And these, these people with these events, they want to get more people to these events, to these corporate events, to these seminars. So guess what? They want to increase engagement because they want to get the attention of people who may be interested in their events with content that's designed to get results. The result is more people to their event. My value statement speaks directly to my target audience within my niche. Does yours? Or do you not have one? So it's important that we build our business around where we want to go. And if you don't have a plan, you're not going to go nowhere. That's why you haven't went nowhere. That's why it's still in your mind. You think if I keep doing what I'm doing for the next five or six years, it'll take off. It won't. Your business can take off in six months if you do the right things. It's not going nowhere. So again, step one of part two is to tailor your message to your audience. Step three or step two, I'm sorry. Step two in part two is to utilize multiple channels. Use various channels to communicate your UVP, your website, social media, email marketing, even in-person networking events. Consistency is key. Make your UVP permanently displayed and easy, easy to understand across all platforms. This is where branding come into play. This is where branding come into play. Um, I see says, where do you have it at? It should be on your website. So, so this is where branding come into play, right? Big brands live their proposition statement. Just do it. Nike. Every company, you know, has a value statement. Google it. They do all of them. Every last one of them. So, once we've tailored our message to our audience, second, we need to utilize our, our channels to make sure that it's all consistent. We're not saying we, we the expensive guy on one, we the cheap guy on the other, but it's all consistent. Next, number three is, and this is something that we talk about big time and on the inside. We, in fact, we had a big talk about it last Wednesday at our accountability meeting, leveraging testimony and case studies. Show, don't tell. Use testimonials and case studies to demonstrate how you've successfully helped clients. Real world examples of your work and how its, how its impact can be incredibly persuasive, right? We want it that people ask, well, what do you ask on testimonials? Or what is your testimonials about? I don't want people saying he was good. I liked him. He, they, was, they, came, they was quick. It was fast. They were cheap. I don't want testimonials like that. That don't help people over the fence. Real testimonials live in your value statement. They support your value statement. They address objections from future clients that support your value statement. Them two sentences right there is worth a month of the academy because I just gave you the game right there. Every time you create, every time you create a testimonial for your brand or for others, it needs to address a objection while supporting your value statement. 
If it does not do that, it is of no use to you or your client. Go use that. Use what I just gave you and go shoot testimonials for your next client and watch how you'll have a client for life. Because people, when they go on websites, when they click play, when they read a testimonial, when they read a review, just like when you go to a, a, a Yelp or Google and it says it's a three star and you read the reviews, you're asking for proof. Why did this restaurant get three stars? I want proof. And you read somebody say, I got crabs from here. It was good. I got shrimp. It was the best. Here's pictures. You want proof. And you have some objections that's stopping you from going to that restaurant. I don't know if the crab legs going to be good. That's my objection. What do I see in the comments? Three people say the crab legs are the best. Okay, now I'm going. Your testimonials should address objections so that, so that the, the, you, the viewer can overcome them and work with you. That's the purpose of testimonials, not to boost that they were good, fun. I really enjoyed working with them. They were nice. Your testimonials are not working for you or your client. They need to address something. Again, let's will this back. Let's go back two steps. This don't matter if we don't know who we're doing it for. If we don't specialize in nothing, if we don't have a target audience, none of this matters. You cannot go to this step if you don't have a niche. You're going to look all over the place if you don't specialize in something. You're going to look like you are just in pieces. You're going to look unorganized. It's going to look like crap if you don't have, if you're not, if you don't have those steps in place. So if you're skipping to the testimonial stage, if you shot a testimonial for your company and you don't have a niche, it's doing nothing for you. It's probably confusing your clients or making you look like the cheap guy. Because that's the only thing you have to present as a reason to do business with you. Other than your passion or love for this. Everybody don't need good photography. Most companies need effective photography. You're being an artist. Most people don't need an artist. Most people don't need good video. They don't need cinematic, spectacular, jaw-dropping video. They need effective video. They need video to teach people how to do things. They don't need Michael Bay explosions and teal and orange. They don't need that. They need effective videos with call to actions that work. That's where the money is. The money is not in creating this art. The money is in creating training videos that train people that are boring as hell. That companies are willing to spend 10, 20, $30,000 on. There's a question that popped up. Um, Crystal Productions. Yeah, I got two niches. Should I make two separate Instagram accounts? Am, am I mixing both or am I mixing both under one is more? Right now, I'm mixing both under one Instagram. One or more for business. Okay, let me tell you. If you got two niches, you need to have two completely different brands. Screw Instagram accounts. You need to have the ability to afford two different websites, two different brand names, two different logos, and two different Instagram. You should have two different everythings. They're completely different brands. They go in completely different directions. That's why Coca-Cola go out and buy juice companies like Minute Maid because Coca-Cola can't sell you juice. And they know they can't sell you juice because they don't specialize in juice. They specialize in bubbly soda. And you wouldn't believe that they sold juice if they presented juice in something with Coca-Cola on it. So what do they do? They go buy a brand that you trust for juice. That's how important it is to separate your brands. And no matter what GM put on the car, you're not going to spend top dollar for it if it has a Chevrolet logo on it. You will if it says Cadillac, because you trust Cadillac as being a more luxurious brand. You can't mix your brands together. And if you can't afford to do multiple brands, then don't. You're not going to make money by serving more people. You make more money, especially as a smaller company, by serving a smaller group very well. The idea of going after everybody is a myth. You will spread yourself thin. You won't be able to provide a high level of service and you won't be in business long. Period. There you go. Now, you know, and no one's half the battle. OK, let me get to the next one. Because we just got off leveraging testimonials and case studies. 
Next, we need to engage. We need engaging content. We need storytelling. We need to create engaging content that tell a story and highlight our unique value. Whether it's a blog post, a video, social media updates, use storytelling to connect with our audience in a, at an emotional level. So we need to, to use storytelling, which is our ability and what we do to, to show our client that our value statement is real, to live and die by our value statement. Not only that, this is something that you need to be presenting to your client, right? This is something that you need to sit in a, in a meeting with and say, hey, client, saw your value statement. I didn't see much content to support it. I know you reached out to me for X, Y, and Z video, but do you guys have anything? Are you guys working on anything for this? Here's an upsell, ladies and gentlemen. Because a lot of y'all are afraid to get high on your own supply and being a content creator is the best place to do so. No problem, Crystal Spotlight Productions. It's all good. I'm just looking at the questions that's popping up. Make sure I got everybody. So, you know, there, there, you got to make sure that you got everything in order. You can't, if you're jumping to, to step six, you're not going to have success. You're going to wonder why you don't have success. It's because you're getting advice from 10 different places and you're just piling it on and you don't know it needs to go in order. I can give you the ingredients to make a cake. If you don't know how to, if you don't know how to mix them in order, it don't matter, right? Some of you guys feel like that with business. Y'all adding sugar after the cake has been baked. It don't work like that. Some of y'all cracking eggs on a cake that's 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 in you know in the oven already. You can't do that. And I feel like YouTube is really good at giving people all the ingredients, but very few very few places put those ingredients in order so that you can have success. I, I always say, you know, you can, find, you can find out what's in a cake online. You're going to have to pay to learn how to bake the cake. It, it is what it is. Like, it, you know, if you're not willing to invest in that, you're not trying to make a cake. Sorry, not sorry. I think that having this information, again, is great, but understanding what order to place it in is, is more important. So it is what it is. Okay, let's get to number uh let's get to number five on the second part. Cause we just we talked about engaging content and storytelling. Last but not least, we need continuous improvement and feedback. Here in module one, right? We talk about beta clients. The Flash from Academy system tells you to get a beta client because there's a lot of things you need help on that I can't help you with that somebody in your audience, your ideal client needs to help you with. And you need to develop a relationship with one so that you can run things by them to see if you're moving in the right direction because only they can determine what's the right direction. Their opinion matters. So last but not least, I'm going to say continuous Seek continuous feedback and be open to improving your UVP. The market and clients are always evolving. So we should, we, so should our value proposition. You know, we regularly review and refine our message to be relevant and effective. As you notice over the years, a lot of companies value propositions change. Look at the army. It used to be, you know, be army strong and, you know what I'm saying? Like every company's had multiple models. Every company's had multiple models. Uh, I said, ask where am I live right now? Right now I'm live on the gram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok. I'm live on all of them, everywhere. So, so again, we need a continuous improvement. You know, we need continuous improvement. So let me, let, me, let me run over all of them again. I'm going to take it from the top again because it's those that's late that's just getting in that really need to understand. Today, we're, again, we're talking about how to set yourself apart. We're talking about our unique value proposition. We're talking about a statement, really something to live by to help show why our company is different, 
what sets us apart in a crowded market. A lot of you guys are getting started in photography, videography. You're in the bottom. You're in a very saturated market of people who are trying to get money doing this. So you need to learn how to set yourself apart, right? Um, General Papa says, hey, I'm in Ghana, and most clients don't even know they have problems. The more you explain to them, they feel like you're talking too much. What do I do in this solution? I like this question. I like this question. Let's talk for a minute. Let's pause. Let's talk for a minute. These are the questions I like. These are the questions that come up in Flash from Academy. Oh, man, I, that, that, this is where I turn water to wine. So let me put this on real quick. Okay, let me bring that question up one more time. So the question talks about, let, let, me, let me tell you, there are some fundamental issues with that question, right? Because the issue isn't, so you think the issue is clients don't know they have a problem. You think that you're having a hard time approaching people about the idea of video or photo for their business. What if I told you, you are the problem? Let me tell you why. When was the last time a plumber walked up to you and asked you, did you need something fixed? When was the last time a chef walked up to you and, and offered you food? Business don't work like that. Stop chasing clients. Build a brand that is where they look when they have emergencies. You can't convince somebody that's perfectly fine that they need to come to a doctor for a checkup. You can convince somebody that's sick. Where are the people who are sick looking for doctors? That's where I need to be. I'm not in the business of convincing people who think that their business is fine without content that they need content. You're chasing the wrong people. I guarantee you there is a large number of people in your area who realize content will help their business. And guess what? They can't find you. Because you don't exist there. They can't find you because you are not there. Not only are you not there, even if somebody gave them your website, your presentation, your brand, or everything you offer says nothing about solving their problem. It says nothing about you are not a problem solver. You are trying to sell me something. Your business, and this is what we build the whole thing around, your business needs to be built around the idea of solving a problem. You need to determine what that problem is and who have that problem so that you can then find out where they look for that problem. It's very simple. If I got a fire, who I'm calling? If somebody breaking in my house, who am I calling? You know the answer. You said fireman. You said police. If a pipe breaks break in my house, who am I calling? A plumber. If my arm is hanging off because it's hurting, where am I going? There are places people go for problems. Have you presented your brand to solve a problem? And if not, you're hoping that you can convince somebody. You know how hard it is to convince somebody that, they, that one, they have a problem Two, they should act right now on that problem. And three, they should spend a lot of money to fix that problem. It is virtually impossible. Very few companies in the history of man have had the ability to do that. Companies, especially services, solve problems. The issue is, is not that the people around you don't know they need what you got. It's that you're not in a position to go after the people who are desperately looking for what you have to offer. One, because you, you don't know to look there, and that's fine. That's what we're here to teach you. Two, you have not set yourself up. You have not presented yourself as the solution to their problem. So let me break it down. Let me give you an example, right? Emergency rooms have presented themselves as the solution to your medical emergency. You know what people say when they go to the emergency room? Help. You know what they don't say? How much is it? 
This is my budget. This is the cost. Nobody in the emergency room is checking prices. They don't care. They need it done right. There is a group of people who are looking for what you have to offer if you solve a problem that don't care what it costs. They want it done right. A lot of content creators don't solve a problem. They create art. They create content. They shoot video. They edit. They make stuff pretty. They light. They, they got study cams and jibs and they shoot in 4K. They shoot in 6K. They don't solve a problem for anybody. They just create content. And until you position your brand to specialize in solving problems for a specific target audience and be where they look, you're not going to have success. You're going to get these lucky one-offs, people who just want some work. They don't, they don't care who do it because they don't have the money to go after a specialist. They just want somebody cheap. And you're going to get lucky and get a few of those and wonder why you can't get consistent work and grow your business, why you can't charge what you should be charging. The audience that you're going after will never help you sustain your business. You're not going after the right audience. You're doing it wrong. And I think a lot of people who decide to do this and go into business take that route because that's the route they know. This is why education is so important. This is why education is so important. These are the type of, like, changing the way you think about this is, is why I tell people to invest in education. Because you're, you're, facing, you're facing a problem that only, it, it only exists due to lack of education in that industry. And it's, I'm not, I'm, don't take it as a, it's not a negative thing. It's just sometimes we don't know what we don't know. And that's cool. But that, you're living in a box. You're, you're, con, you're confined to a box that I don't want to say you have created, but, but that box only exists because of lack of knowledge. By gaining more knowledge, you can easily get out of that box. Right. Because because we can find out what problem who who are we who are we solving problems for? All right. We're solving problems for. And I'm just going to hypothetically just give you whatever we're solving problems for. Fish markets. Right. We, we work with markets that sell seafood. Our ideal client is. The market owner. Well, where would they look? What, what problems will they have? Okay, and where will they look to solve those problems? Maybe they have a problem of not getting enough people to buy fish, or they have a problem of recruiting. They're not bringing in enough people to get the fish off the boat to get it on, on the display fresh enough. Okay, well, let's, let's talk to some of them to find out where they look to solve this problem. They're going to tell you where you need to be. Those are things we go over on the other side. I'm Listen, you, you can listen to all the gurus you want to tell you where you should look for business and blah, blah, blah. They don't know. They're not your ideal client. I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'm here to teach you how to think. And if you know how to think about it, if you know who to talk to and what direction you should be going in, I can help you always for the rest of your life understand how to discover that information. That is more valuable than me telling you where the spot you need to stand. Me teaching you how to discover this information every single time is more valuable than me telling you go here right now and stand there and wait. So when it comes to being a content creator, if you don't understand the importance of your ability to solve a problem, you're going to face those issues. You're going to face those issues. 
But those issues are easy day one issues to overcome. Um, question similar. He told me more effect. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think was another question popped up. Let me make sure. Okay, tag along still on filming music videos and corporate commercials. Hard to choose between the two. For who? No, it ain't. Music videos don't pay no money. Because there's no return on investment with music video. If it's hard to choose between the two, then you're doing something wrong on the corporate commercial side. Because I've never had a music video pay anything close to the worst half-ass, one-man crew corporate commercial. It's not even close. Companies companies respect the re expect a return on investment. They're looking at this content expecting a return. They don't mind spending what it takes. They have a budget for it. Music videos are usually paid for by the artist. They're hoping to get something out of it. Unless you have a deal with you know, the studio, unless you have a deal with the record label who looking to get a return off the investment, the artists don't. The artists don't. I'm I'm and 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 let me be honest with you, the corporate commercial is gonna be a gonna be uh two headshots and a panning movement. The music video gonna be six locations, 12 hours of editing, special effects. I gotta line it up to the music, I gotta I gotta chrono this and cut out that. No. Corporate video is gonna be two headshots and a panning shot of the lib of the of the, of the lobby. And a picture of the outside fading to black with a cheesy logo is going to be $10,000. I'm taking corporate every day. It's not even close. So it shouldn't be... Music videos... Are not, the only way music videos come close to corporate is if you're not doing something right. Corporate is where the money is times 20. It's the easiest, biggest check you'll ever make in content creation that will be more consistent than everything. And that corporate check, they're going to hire you twice a month to do it for the rest of the time. That music video is going to be once. And you're going to be flipping through hoops with guns in your camera to shoot it. No. From a person that don't even want to give you the money because he don't believe in himself. No, I'm not shooting music video. I'm shooting all corporate. It's not even close. The, the local donut shop next to you need video. They need photos. They need, they need to update their social media content every day. The donut shop on your corner. They, the, if you do it right, they're going to call you every month. That music video is not. I'm, I'm not shooting music videos. I'm done with music videos. Let the guys who just got their cameras from Best Buy shoot music videos. I'm not knocking it, but I'm not doing it. I don't even want the, the, how do you market for a music video? Like who, who says I'm going to spend top dollar on a music video? Who says spare no expense with a music video these days? Are there people who do it? Yeah. But is it the majority? No. Is it enough to live on? No. If every now and then, what I, can I, somebody roll up on me and say, yo, we got a few grand cuz can you shoot our video family member? Okay. Yeah. But would I, would I make a living off of it? Would I build my brand around it? Hell no. Why? When I can go shoot talking head videos for companies you never heard of that sell freaking their rent rugs to businesses around you and do 10000 a month. Why? When I can do training videos on how to properly wash your hands for restaurants. I've shot these videos. Literally. Have, have charged thousands of dollars to shoot a video on how to wash your hands. Literally. So, you know, it's, it, I, I'm not, I, there's no way I'm, I'm not, I'm not shooting, I'm not shooting music videos. It's no way. It's not happening, fam. Anyway, that's, that's why we got it. It's all about the education. These are the things we talk about over at Flash Film Academy. If you're not a member and you're having these issues, I'm going to highly encourage that you be a member. It's less than a dollar a day. These are, the, these are the things that I run into when it comes to content creators who struggle with understanding, you know, how things work in business. I want to change how you think about it because you offer, you need to solve a problem. You need to know who problem you're solving. You need to know what they like, where they look. 
if you saw, let's just, let's just, let's make it really simple. If you're solving a problem for somebody over 40 compared to solving a problem for somebody under 20, what social media platform do you think is best? If they over 40, should I be marketing on Instagram or Snapchat? Should I be marketing on TikTok? Or should I be on Facebook? Should I be on Google? If they're under 40, do you think I'll have a better chance or don't you think I'll have a better chance reaching them on TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram? Like that alone helps you spend so, le so much less money on where to market. Like that alone, let alone other things that they like. So you got to understand who your target audience is and where they are. You know what helped increase sales when I was working with dentists? And this is something I talk about a lot. You know what helped increase sales? Making my font bigger on my website. Because I, because I was told by dentists who were at the time older that we can't read your small font. I thought it was perfectly fine. But my audience is 55-year-olds. Increasing the font and inc increase sales by 12%. Because, because that's what my target audience is. That's what they like. I understand I serve my target audience. So these are things that we need to be mindful of. Um, Ray Bizzer says, I think that's how I pronounce your name. Bizarre, I may have pronounced it right, wrong. How, how, how do you know how much to charge how, to quote a job? That's a great question. That's a loaded question. That's an inside question. There's a lot of things that go into play. My prices are my price. I don't ask for a budget. The, the same way Walmart know what to charge you for their, their groceries. It's a loaded question. We go over it in detail here. Um, and, and I'm going to tell you the reason why I want to push you in that direction is because there are 10 other things we need in place before we get to pricing, right? There's 10 other things we need to ask. The price for what somebody may charge in California is different than the price of what somebody may charge in New York. How I come to that price is different based off the industry that I'm in, the niche that I'm in and who I serve. Don't all these people, let me tell you this, all these People on YouTube that's having you look at the price of your gear to determine your price are idiots. All these people that saying, I paid this for my camera. I paid this for that lens. I should be charging you this amount. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It sounds great on YouTube, but it's very dumb. Let me tell you why. Do you care how much the, the ice cream machine costs at McDonald's? Do it play a part in the cost of your milkshake? Would you care if they spent more for that ice cream machine? Would you care if they had a $10,000 ice cream machine over a $20,000 ice cream machine? Would you care? Would you, are you willing to spend more for your milkshake because they spent more for their machine? You don't care. What makes you think your client care how much you spent for your camera? They don't. They don't care. You look like a bitter, mad artist. Who, who not making money when you start blurting out how much you spent for your equipment. whoop de doo You had to. You can't be in business without equipment. Stop looking at your equipment as a way to justify your price. There is no value for your client in the equipment that you have. I know a lot of people who have great equipment that can't use it. There are other ways you need to show value to your client based off what problems you solve. The value is always around your ability to solve problems, never around the tools you use to solve problems, right? When you go buy a car and you want your seats to be warm when you get in that cold car, you don't care about the, the name of the coils they use to warm your butt. You don't care about the feature. You care about the benefit. The benefit to me is I have a warm butt when I get in my car in the cold. I don't care how they had to make it happen. I don't care about it's dual layer, blah, 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 hand bent from the, I don't care if the metals come from the Himalayan. My, I don't care. I care that my seat is warm when my car is cold. 
don't go to your clients talking about, we use the best metal possible to warm your butt. They don't care. So I feel like as a lot of content creators, because we're stuck on features and, and megapixels and, you know, all this technology that we think our client is just as happy to hear about it. They don't care. They don't care about 4K, 2K, 1080p. They don't care. Unless you run into somebody that's like an agency that's looking to shoot it for a specific purpose, like a commercial or a movie, and they want to match cameras and yada, yada, yada. Those guys care. The average client don't care. I've seen people damage their relationship with clients because they're trying to sell 6K video. And the client is saying, I need it to load fast. Yo, you sent me a two gigabyte file. I need it to load fast. We're showing this on office computers. With Windows freaking 98, on, I need you. You sent me a 6K file. I guarantee you none of your clients got 4K monitors. What's the benefit to the client? Like, how does the client benefit from 4K? You just wanted 4K. So you can edit and zoom in and punch in. You didn't even listen to your client to, to like, to know you need to deliver it in 1080p or 720p. So these are things that people don't think about. I think there's a question that pop up. At McDonald's, I just hope it works. Absolutely. Cool, but do you think prices vary from industry to industry? Nope. I think prices vary from problem to problem. I think, I think we can't, the industry don't matter. The, you, the problem you solve matters. Solve big problems, make big money. See, the problem is because a lot of content creators don't have relationships with their target audience and they're guessing, you don't know if you're solving a $2 problem or a $2,000 problem. All you know is you want to charge $20,000 for it. All you know is you want to, hey, I, I spent this money on this camera. It take me 10 hours. I'm trying to get $10,000 for shooting a video to bring you more clients. Never have you ever asked that client, do he, uh, that, that business owner, is that a problem he have? And, and what does it cost to him? Like, what do he care about bringing in more clients? And is he losing $50,000 in business per month not to address this? Because then it's a $10,000 problem. Have you ever asked a client that? Because if he's losing $2 worth of business and you got a $20,000 video, he don't care. But if you don't specialize in something, if you don't have a niche, if you don't live within the industry, you won't understand the problems your target audience consistently run into. So you won't provide solutions to address those consistent problems. This is the part in the comments where you type bars because you out here fishing in the wrong place with the wrong bait, with the wrong hook, with the wrong rod, with the wrong weights, the wrong line, hoping to catch something. Business is not something you hope on. It's strategic. It takes planning. You build it. You design it for success. Hope and business don't go together. If you hoping your business do better next year, it's not going to do better because you have not designed it for success. Because you have not learned what it takes to build it in the right direction. That is why you are where you are. And until you design it to be successful, you're going to be in the same place you're in, hoping. Hoping that and blaming the economy, blaming customers, blaming people, blaming everybody but this guy as to why your business is not where it should be. Because you rather get Netflix and get Jordans and spend $200 on eating McDonald's out or eating out this month than to do what it takes to strengthen this. That is called being lazy. That is the definition of being lazy. A lot of people don't, they blame, they blame other stuff. We live in a world where all of the information you need to change your life is available to you. 
It's not like it was 50 years ago where you had to have access to a library, to a special collection of books. Everything you need to change your life is available to you. You just choose to use your, your gadgets and your machines for entertainment purposes. That's a choice you make. It is what it is. Anyway, let's go over Let me go over these, these items again before I close out because we just got to, it is what it is, right? Somebody got to tell you it is what it is. If you're looking to grow in this industry, it is what it is. They're telling me to verify to continue. Um, you know, and it's just, you know, it is what it is. So let me go over, let me go over these things. Cause I think it is in, in the community, in the community. Um, we like to here stage one, we like to make sure that as we develop your company, as we understand who we are going after, as we understand whose problem we're looking to solve so that we can sell our services to solve their problem. One of the biggest things we talk about in this, in this foundational course is we talk about making sure that we understand our value proposition. What sets us apart? What makes us different? Why would you hire us? Why do you care about what we got to offer? Why should you listen to us? Why are you on our website? Do our colors support that? Do my logo support that? Is my wording, is my copy written in a style to support my value proposition? All of that matter. Is my, do my, you know, I can't say I'm high class. We offer high level of support. And then I show up in a t-shirt. Does my, do my, like, is every part of my brand supporting my unique value proposition? And I want you to pay attention to this because as you start to look at other businesses, you will notice that everything about their brand aligns with their value proposition. Everything, the, the uniforms, the way their signs, their fonts, their music, everything aligns with their value proposition. It's just you've been, you haven't been aware of it, but now you are. So up first, we need to understand the importance of a unique value proposition. Next, we need to identify the strengths and dif differentiators of our brand, what sets us apart. And we went into detail on what you got to do to get there. Next, we need to research the competition. We need to understand what their weaknesses are. After that, we need to craft a unique value proposition statement. We need to live by that statement. Then we need to tailor our statement to our audience. What works for one won't work for other, right? What works for one won't work for other. You got to understand who you're talking to before you make the statement. Right. Then we need to utilize multiple channels to get that statement out there and make sure it's consistent across everything. Then we need to leverage testimonials, case studies and things like that to support our statement. We need to give proof that we're about this life. We can't just say thug life. We need to give proof we're about this life. Then we need to create engaging content and tell stories to support why we about this life to go with our case studies and our testimonials. Last but not least, we need to continue to improve our, our, our statement, um, our value proposition and our statement. We need to listen for feedback. We need to make sure this statement evolves with the times. We need to make sure we do that. Um, question popped in. He said, I'm the one in here on TikTok. He said, uh, do you tell us how to get clients? I'm dead broke right now with 10K worth of equipment. Absolutely. That's all we talk about is how to get clients. Absolutely. M Module one is all about getting you clients. It's all about presenting yourself. A lot of people got a lot of equipment. I know a lot of people with a lot of equipment. They thought for some, listen, equipment manufacturers have done a great job at making you believe that you are not where you're supposed to be due to lack of equipment. The crazy part is technology has caught up so quick that even the cheap stuff can perform to some level of what the good stuff can. It's not about equipment anymore. We, ha we have members that are shooting, that are getting $50,000 gigs with cell phones. We have members that are getting $50,000 gigs with iPhones. 
because they because they can solve a client problem with an iPhone. Some clients have problems that that should only be solved with iPhones. But if you don't understand how to approach that client, if you don't understand how to offer that solution, you will never have the ability to do it. You will not get lucky and land a $50,000 job. Nobody's spending $50,000 to see what happens. Nobody's spending $20,000 to, to let's see. It's not happening. You're not going to attract a large client if you don't specialize in something. And that something needs to be solving their problem. If you're not a problem solver, you will not special, you won't make good money in this industry anymore. The, the, the time of bringing in artistic people to create art, it's over with. Some days are gone because they have tools, they have AI and other tools that can create art. We don't need people to generate art anymore. We need people to provide content that get results. We need problem solvers with cameras. Your job is no longer a photographer or a videographer or a filmmaker. You are a problem solver that provides a cinematic solution. You are a doctor and the prescriptions you write come through your camera. I'm prescribing two videos to do this, a video to do that, and some photos on your social media to fix that. Here you are. Let's cash in this prescription and let's get to work. If you're not looking at it that way, you're not going to make it. And if you are just the camera guy that's hired, to, when they, if you think clients going to know what they want, write the script, and all they're going to do is bring you on set to point over there and film it, you're not going to make no money. You're, the, you're now a freelancer making $40 an hour, and then you're done. And AI is going to take your job. There are camera, iPhones will take your job. If you're not providing the complete solution, if you are not the project manager, you will not cash a big check in this industry. If you're not solving the problem, you will not cash a big check in this industry. As you say, if you were a 23 year old photographer or videographer who fresh out of school with subpar equipment, what would you do and where would you start? I would start with learning the business. How do you know your equipment is subpar if you don't know what problem you solve? You know what I'm saying? Like, how, th that's the thing. Like, how, how do you know you don't have right equipment when we don't know what problem we're solving? How do you know you got the wrong fishing rod if we don't know what type of fish we're going to catch? We don't know. How, we, you know what I'm saying? Like, subpar for who? If I'm shooting testimonials, I don't need reds. I don't need high-end equipment if I'm, if I'm creating testimonials for my clients. That equipment may be more than enough. You may have overspent for equipment. You could have been got started making money with it, but you overspent thinking you need to keep up with the guys on YouTube. You may have over... Subpar equipment is subjective to subpar, sub, subpar equipment is subjective to, to your liking. Subpar for who? Other videographers and photographers? Andrew, exactly. If someone can make 50000 with a cell phone, what makes your equipment subpar? And if you don't believe me, go to Flash Film Academy. There's a testimonial. He's telling you. If you look under Luke's testimonial, he's talking about how he made 50000 with with a cell phone. To sum it up, he met clients that needed user-generated content on their TikTok to grow their business. We don't need polished videos. We need user-generated content to market. Client was like, yes. They shot it, marketed it, boom. Client made money off of it. If they paid 50 grand, what do you think they made off of it? So sub, sub, your equipment is, is subjective to your, to your target audience and what problem you solve. Your equipment can be all GoPros. You may have a, you may do car reviews for companies and need to put 50 GoPros places. Like subpar equipment for who? We, we don't even know who we service. We got to know who we service first. It, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people, it's like an analogy I like to use is you asking a chef, what's a good knife? I don't know what you're trying to cut, ma'am. What are you cutting? Are we cutting cakes? Are we cutting beef? What are we cutting with this knife? 
I can't tell you what's a what's a great skillet to use because I don't know what you're cooking. You cooking rice? You cooking meat? And I and you gotta you gotta determine what type of chef you are before you go buy a set of knives. Cause we don't know what you cook what you cutting. Great gear to somebody who specializes in sports is trash to somebody who do product photography. That's why it's so many different cameras. That's why, you know, it's, it's four different A7S models because it, it differs depending on what your specialty is. I think that you buy gear, and, and this is where a lot of people go wrong. You buy gear based off what you like because you have not built a brand to understand who your target audience is so that you can buy gear based off what your target audience need. You don't buy gear with the idea of the benefit to the client. That's why your gear doesn't pay for itself. That's why your gear have not been a profitable purchase for you because you don't have a target audience and you don't have benefits that you're, you should look at your camera and say, okay, in body stabilization, the benefit to my client is now I can do more moving shots in their lobby to get better panning shots of their facilities. What's the benefit to your client? If you can't justify that with the purchase of your gear, you're making an emotional decision. It's not going to help your business. Most people buy new cameras and ain't even learn the old camera they had. So I, I think that the first thing we do is we change how you think about things so that you make better decisions. Because a lot of people don't make better decisions. They don't make good decisions. They make decisions based off what they want. And it's because they've watched too many YouTube videos that told you that when we pixel peep and we zoom in to 8,000%, this is sharper than that. So you need it. And you go out here thinking like, damn, you're right. Man, I need 8K. 4K ain't enough. For who? For you? You don't got an 8K screen in your house. You editing footage. You don't even know what it really look like. I don't know a lot of people with, with 4K monitors yet. And most of the TVs you have ain't even true 4K. Half of y'all shot footage and you don't even really know what it look like. The screens on the camera aren't, aren't high quality enough to show you how great the image is. You don't have a screen in your house that produced the level of quality in 10 bit that your, that your file produces, yet you still want it. You're overspending for features your client will never appreciate, hoping to get a return on that investment. That's not a smart business move. That's just really good marketing from that camera company. Your client don't know the difference. And if your client don't know that, if I can't charge them for the difference, it's pointless for me to spend money to get it. We got to change how you think about it. We got to change how you think about it. So, you know, um, let me see. Business has been slow for me and nearly half of my competitors have left the marketing platform. I pay to book clients. Any advice? Yep. A lot of advice. Um, it's, it's never saturated. It's just that I want you to always think of this. It's never saturated. I'm just not as good as I think I am. It's never saturated. And if it is saturated, that's great. That tells me it's a, it's a, the market is here. I just need to take more of your market. It's easy to do in photography and videography because don't nobody want to learn a business. Everybody want to be artists. So the moment I put a few systems and processes in place, the moment I look like a brand and not John Smith photography, I start stealing your market share. I've been doing it for years. Anybody that compete with my brand, that's John Smith photography is, is done. When they come up against my brand, they, they cannot compete because companies buy from companies. They don't buy from people. Businesses buy from businesses. They don't buy from people. And if you're John Smith Photography, if you're John Smith Media Company, you're a person. I will always have you beat because I am a brand. The same way you don't trust 
John Smith Cable Company knocking on your door saying, I can give you cable. Just you? You and who? You as a person subconsciously feel more comfortable buying a car from a dealership. Even though you can save $20,000 buying it from a person on the street, you just feel more comfortable that way. You feel more comfortable buying a TV from a big brand store than you do from somebody on the street. I get I get a return policy. I get blah, whatever. Whatever they've put in place, all of that has been to add value to the purchase so that you feel more comfortable buying it from them, spending an extra 40%, 30% buying it from them. You just gotta you gotta grow this. You gotta grow the business. Andrew made a good analogy. Market saturated means everybody entry level photographer, but not too many take it to the next level and can demand more. Absolutely. The bottom is saturated. The bottom is saturated. The bottom of portrait photography moms or or people who um people who want to just make a little money on the side. I'm just going to take a little few engagement shots and do a little that. Yeah. It's super saturated with people who don't understand business. People who doing 50 hour shoot sessions, sessions. Absolutely. is filled with those people. That's doing buy one, get one free people. That's posted on their own Facebook page of we run in promotions and shoot specials. Tell a friend we run in $50, you know, whatever. They don't know how to price they work. They don't know what the price for. The people that still selling prints in 2024. Yeah, it's saturated for little people. They don't know what to do. They think that they're not good enough to make money. They have never taken the time to consider the business aspect of, of photography or videography. It's not a business to them. It's a hobby. It is saturated with hobbyists. You're absolutely correct. The business side is not saturated. It's a blue ocean. It's wide open. It's, it's, it's so much money that I can teach people how to make money on that side of the business and still don't run into bumping into y'all. It's that much money. I still don't run into bumping to people that I teach how to make money using the same methods I teach you. Facts all day. It's that much money. Because businesses need content every day. They're not slowing down. Your friend may need you for a party once or twice a year. Businesses need content every day. Every business, for every platform, all the time. And they need more and more every year. Because traffic is shifting from TV to social media. And guess what? They're going to need more content. You are starting to not look in magazines to learn whether or not you should buy something. You're going to YouTube videos to, to learn whether or not you should buy something. You're looking at reviews to learn whether or not you should buy something. You're looking on social media to validate purchases, right? We talk about the buying stage all the time. Number one, after you recognize you have a problem, that number two place is shifting from TV to social media. Businesses who are smart invest in being with number two and number three and number four. And when they get done, when you do number five, they're asking that you post testimonials and, and things. So their number six will help those who are in number two. It's business, people. It's very simple. You just got to learn it. You just got to understand how it works. Um, you know, it's just how it works. Paul asks, am I the face of Flash Home Academy? Temporarily, a little bit, a little bit. So I think that once you start to think about business differently, you'll have, you'll have different levels of success. We got to think about this, this thing differently. We got we to gotta understand that we don't know what we don't know. And hoping that it change is not the answer. Hoping that it, we one day we get a client or somebody calls. It's not the answer. It's not the answer. Going up to people, begging them, or trying to help them realize how content will help them is not the answer. They cannot be saved. There is a, there is a group of people who are begging for 
their problems to be solved and you are nowhere to be found. They are begging for you to solve their problems. You are nowhere to be found and you have not demonstrated your ability to solve that problem. Sometimes you have not demonstrated your ability to, to solve that problem at a level that that client wants. You have not communicated or shown that client that you are the best at solving that problem. That's why when you go to plastic surgeon websites, you see before and afters, plenty of them. They don't just show you one breast augmentation. They show you 200 of them. Not only can he solve problems, but this plastic surgeon is consistent at solving these problems. In fact, here are 200 different people who had problems similar to the one you have that came to us, and this is how they left. We do nothing but solving problems. But you know what you don't see? You don't see plastic surgeons talking to women who don't have big breasts and to talking them into getting bigger breasts. You don't see plastic surgeons saying, hey, you would be nice if you were a D cup. That is offensive. It's not a good look, fam. Every time you content creators are running up on people who don't want video or photo in their business, trying to convince them that they need it or it will help them, you sound like a plastic surgeon trying to convince a lady that she need to go up a few cup sizes in a bar. You sound weird. You're annoying. Get out of here. I ain't thinking about what you're talking about. Get out of here. You are the weird guy peddling your little camera sales, and we don't want to hear it. Plastic surgeons don't come into your house telling you to upgrade your body. But for those who are ready, they are exactly where they look. And if you don't know the answer to where your people look, it's probably because you don't know who your people are. If you don't know who your people are, it's probably because you have not figured out what problem you solve and who benefit from that problem. You see how those layers work together? So when you say you want clients, do you really want clients? Because we got some questions to ask about your brand and what you do before we can determine who would even benefit from what you offer. You just want to service everybody. And servicing everybody, the only person that's going to go with is the cheap person. I know it usually costs 10000 Man, I got 500 Let me see what you can do. We don't want to work with those people. We want to be where the people look who have the problems we solve. And then we want to be the best at solving those problems. That is your equation to making your business work. In the simplest form, if you're not building your brand to live that equation, you probably don't have success right now. I can't make it any easier than that to understand. I can't, I can't show you why information is so valuable any easier than that. Like, it's amazing that people will be like, information is a scam. How? If I show you a video on how to properly take your vacuum cleaner apart and change the belt, is that a scam? If, if I sell you a video on how to take it apart as compared to you taking it to the vacuum store, my video costs $10. The vacuum store is causing, charging you $100 to change the belt on your vacuum cleaner. Is my video a scam? Is my video shady? Is what we talk about wrong? If I'm teaching you how to change your own belt on your vacuum cleaner, I don't think so. But there are people who like, that's a scam. I'm taking it back to the vacuum store. I'm going to pay the $100. Go for it. But business is easy to understand. The first thing we have to do is it takes some discipline to understand who we are and what we want to do. After you tell me what you want to do, we got to do the research and say, who needs that? Who needs it? If you don't know who needs it, how do we know? If let's just let's just go, let's just focus on a little bitty point. If we don't know who needs it, how do we know how where do we market? What type of music do we use? What tone do we talk in? How do we know? How do I know? There's no way of knowing. You're guessing. You're hoping. You're trying to get to everybody. 
You know what stores specialize in reaching everybody? Walmart. You know what their mission statement is? You know what they value? Price. You know why they can do that? Because they're big enough to buy in such a great big bulk that they can service price shoppers and make a profit. Can you do that? Can you send 10 people to their, to their job to shoot content at a price that's so cheap and still make a profit? You probably can't. So you know what we need to do? We need to solve the problem of rich people, of rich companies. We need to solve problems for people who got money so we can solve less problems and make more money. I can, I can, I can bring you to the water. I can't make you drink it. I'm giving you the game. It's up to you on what you want to do with it. You can spend the rest of today being entertained. But I jumped on here for over an hour to make it as, as easy to understand and digest as possible. And some people care. Like some people look at their camera and say, I'm going to use this to get me out of my situation. I'm going to use this to make it. I'm going to make a living with this. I'm going to make money with this. I'm going to get out of debt with this. I'm going to pay off my car with this. Some people, it's just a hobby. I respect that. But for those of you that want to get the bag, that want to use this to, to more than offset your income, there is a, there is a place of people who, who feel the same way. Us. Anyway, I'm going to ask you to do what I always ask you to do. Is be inspired, be creative, but you damn sure better be profitable. I can't make it no easier than that. And every, every business around you needs you. Every business around you, they need content. They need photo. They need video. Every business, every single business, the hot dog stand everywhere. I want you to just think about that. When you get in your car today and you ride down that street, every business need content. And they need it every day. Multiple versions for multiple channels. Where are they getting it from? Why, where, are they, where are they getting the content from? You sitting there with your camera, you're not making money, they're not getting enough content. Why aren't they hiring you? It's a legitimate question. You know you good. You know you can create content, but they don't. They, they, have, they, don't, they don't know why they should hire you. They don't know why they should spend twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 bringing you in. They don't know that you have the ability to solve their problems. They don't even know that you recognize their problems. They don't even know that you exist to recognize their problems. We need to change that. When you're ready to change it, you come on, see us over at Flash Home Academy, because that's all we do. Change how you think about the world around you so that you can grow your business, start your business in the world of content creation. It's very simple. Or you can keep chasing better quality, thinking that, you know, buying the latest and greatest gear will help you get there. How's that working out for you? How much, how much more money did you make upgrading from the A7S3 to the A7S4? If you would invest in business, the only camera you would have paid for out of your pocket would have been your first one. Let me say that again because it went over some of y'all heads. If you would have invested in learning business, the only camera you would have paid for out of your pocket, out of doing things other than camera work, should have been your first one. After that, it should pay for itself. I, I can't make it no easier than that. With that being said, I will see y'all next week. All my members, I will see y'all tomorrow on our accountability meeting. Every week we have it. You ain't going to just take content over here. We ain't going to just take courses. We're going to hold your ass accountable. Because in Flash Home Academy, we create winners. I don't, we can't have you out here saying, I did it and nothing happened. If you, if, you, if you digest this content and you get nothing from it, it's because you didn't implement it. You didn't act on it. Because every week, more and more people come back to our accountability meetings and they, and they have wins. If you're not being successful, it's due to lack of discipline or implementation. So all my members, I will see you tomorrow so we can chop it up and we can kind of really talk about, uh, you know, 
the industry this week, what has changed, talk about some AI and things we can do to continue to improve and get better and dominate the industry um, above this thick layer of beginners that are saturating the beginning stage. So I will see y'all in, you know, tomorrow with that. All my, all my, you know, all my uh, members, everybody else, I'll see you next week. If you're listening on a podcast, please make sure you're rated. If you're watching it, hit the thumbs up, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And uh, rest of y'all, see y'all later. You've been listening to Content and Cash, a Flash Film Academy podcast. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and go to our webpage at www.flashfilmacademy.com.